The big thing about the future is that I spend most of my time actually, strange enough, looking at the present. I travel around the world looking at markets where, for reasons of the way they've evolved or their technology level, are a bit further ahead than Australia. And particularly I've been looking at markets like China, Japan, Korea. And the really big thing that you see coming out now is really just the shift from the web to mobile. And uh, the Asian countries already made it, and I think now with the iPhone and the iPad, we're starting to discover a world where people can access any content and deal with any kind of business wherever they are at any time. I think one of the unfortunate things in Australia is we're still having a lot of large debates about simple things like broadband. And you always know when things become election topics that they're almost, almost destined to become ruined. But I, I think Australia, uh, culturally, if you look at our businesses, there's a great willingness on behalf of both consumers and brands to now embrace new platforms, uh, whether they be um, mobile applications or social media. And I think particularly at the, this AFA conference, one of the really exciting topics that have come up is this question of um, how do now do the, the next generation of financial advisors engage their clients using the latest in technologies. The great thing about anyone in the advisory business is that they understand the most important thing about social networking up front, which is social. I mean, they, they, are, people, they are people businesses and they, they thrive on their own physical networks. All that's changed in the last few years is that the interface between them and their customers is starting to change. So they understand the basics of how to connect with people. They just need to finish the last step, which is how to use things like LinkedIn, Facebook business pages and Twitter to now accelerate the natural process of building networks, which they do intuitively. The one thing that people do when they're about to do something major in their life is they go to Google and they start typing in questions. Now, most companies don't actually focus on how they can maximize turning up those top few results in Google. Now, the key to that, whether you're a financial advisor or you're a bank or even a retailer, is to create content. So advisors today now need to pretend almost like they're media moguls. They need to be creating guides on investment. They need to be creating blog posts, um, helping people how to structure their property investments. The more content they create, the more important it is to have social media to then direct people's attention to that content. So there's really a virtuous cycle between building networks, creating content, and making sure that when consumers and clients are looking for information, they can find you. Bank of America had a big issue last year where one of their um, credit card holders, a woman called Ann Mitch, was so furious that her interest rate went up overnight to 30%. She didn't just complain normally or write a letter. She actually recorded a YouTube video calling for a debtor's revolt. And as a result, that was viewed by about a million times within a week. And two weeks later, Bank of America, with a massive PR crisis on their hand, had to reverse their entire policy. So the consequences of not participating in the conversation that consumers are already having now about financial products and financial advice can be devastating for the people involved in them. I think the important thing for advisors really um, is to not expect they can do it all by themselves. Uh, one of the big challenges actually on a separate issue that advisors have is generational. So it's actually knowing how to get new blood into their business, um, in some cases with their family businesses to find ways to engage their children in their own business. I think this is the great opportunity now with social media. Uh, don't ban Facebook at work. Actually channel the energy of the people that you think are misusing it into creating profits for your business. Turn your kids into your digital A team and give them the responsibility to grow the, your network on these new platforms because they'll actually understand more intuitively some of the trade-offs with risk and reputation and brand and also to know how to use the t right kind of tone um, to be speaking to people on the internet. So I, I think that's often the best way to handle things is to actually get the new generation involved in your business. I think we're all a bit sick of hearing about Generation X and Generation Y. I think for many of us in the business, you sort of have this gut feeling they should just shut up and get on and, and get a job. Uh, but there's one thing I think that really makes these new generations quite distinct, and it's a generation I should call the naturals. It's people born after 94. And if you think about it, 94 was a key date in history. It was the date that the first internet browser became released. And from that point on, any kid born after 94 has grown up in a world never knowing anything other than the web. So it's completely normal to them that the way they do business, the way they research brands, the way they expect to be talked to is web and increasingly mobile. So 
I think from an advisor standpoint, um, if you're starting to now deal with this new generation, you're going to have to have people who can speak their language. When you go and see them, you're probably going to have to go there carrying devices that they recognize. And if you start pulling out paper forms and giving them pencils to fill things out, they're going to look at you like you rode a horse on the, on, to the way to the meeting. So it's going to be very important, I think, from just a language perspective to understand how the channels are changing.